Banjo-Tooie is better than Kazooie. Yeah, that's right. Banjo-Kazooie was a game that defies time. A game that was packaged and presented so perfectly that it became an instant classic and the new standard of a genre that was just taking off two years prior thanks in large part to the release of Super Mario 64, the 3D platformer. This game was followed by a sequel that in my opinion was bigger, better, and greater in just about every way. So why is it that fans argue about which game is better? Is my opinion of the sequel being superior in the wrong? Can I defend it? Are people just hung up on the performance issues on N64 hardware that an ambitious and well-designed sequel was held back by its time? Are people just dumb? To get to the bottom of that, we're throwing these games in the ring and combining all I've learned from my analyzing series to find out which one is the superior banjo. This is Kazooie vs. Tooie. I want to offer this disclaimer. I'm aware that these games were re-released on Xbox Arcade, and Kazooie is even on the Switch Online Expansion Pass, offering performance fixes with consistent frame rates and such, and I... I don't care. I will only be looking at these games the way they were originally intended on N64 hardware. Now that being said, we're going to be breaking this down into topics so we can really dig in and take a looky-poo at the elements I believe separate Kazooie and Tooie. Gameplay fluidity. Obviously, Tui being a sequel will have the advantage of having more moves, as it used Kazooie as a baseline and adds more as a typical sequel would. However, it's not that simple. Even basic moves have been altered to give Tui a different feel than Kazooie. A feeling as I would describe as better movement fluidity. Oftentimes, more moves doesn't equal better gameplay, it's more of a quality versus quantity situation. Banjo and Kazooie have the same similar functions in Tui as in Kazooie, but a few modifications were made to improve the gameplay. Like the roll attack. In Kazooie, you'd roll in a straight line and be stuck on that path. Tui optimized this by allowing you to control the roll. Rather than being tied to a straight line, you can maneuver it in a direction using the thumbstick. This makes it an ideal fast move to use to attack enemies quickly, or easier to jump out of and build some momentum. And to top it all off, they added Kazooie's model over Banjo. I think this makes it feel as though Banjo and Kazooie practiced to make their role stronger since Tui does take place two years after Kazooie. But that's just my little bit of insight into the lore. The improved swimming ability. In Kazooie, you could either press A when underwater to get a more precise and slow movement speed using only Banjo underwater, or pressing B, Kazooie would flap her wings to give you a fast, shoot-forward movement. Tui introduces swimming the exact same way, so how did Tui improve this? By keeping the same mechanics, however adding an option to use both at the same time, giving you snappier controls while being able to swim fast. This greatly improved swimming mechanics and made worlds that emphasized it feel a lot better and faster paced. Did Kazooie swimming work? Yes, Tui just took it to the next level. If there's one thing that swimming based levels need, it's to be fast paced. Often these type of levels bring the fun platforming to a halt. I've just never been huge on it myself. But it's okay if you like swimming levels, I still love you, but barely. In Kazooie, Banjo would have an attack where he would claw swipe if you stood still and hit the B button. This offered a three hit attack that could hurt enemies directly in front of you. It wasn't ideal and really was underused. Tui on the other hand replaced that move entirely with Kazooie attacking forward with her beak three times. This also moves you forward slightly. This increased the range of the attack and made it a more viable option. Getting a bit further in the game, you can even unlock the Briegel Bash, which is a super strong move where Banjo slams Kazooie into the ground, making it even more viable and one of the best moves in Smash Bros. Ultimate. New moves. There's a lot. While in Kazooie, in addition to your basic attacks, you also learn two different kinds of pads, two different kinds of shoes, the Wonder Wing ability, and the ability to shoot eggs. In Tui, you learn an additional two types of shoes, four additional types of eggs, a few enhancements to basic moves and movements such as the Bill Drill, which enhances the Beak Buster and Ledge Grab, which lets you navigate ledges. I'm surprised that wasn't in Kazooie, honestly. And with the addition of separating, you learn even more moves on top of that. Now, I'm not claiming that more moves equals better. Some moves we get are kind of dumb, even if they have their uses, like sleeping in your backpack to recover health, or the fact that Kazooie has all these egg types, but you'll find you really want to just use grenade eggs and it basically means you'll never use your basic eggs ever again. I also question the fact that a lot of these new moves you learn are really relearning your basic moves, but when separated. Like Kazooie learning how to backflip or Banjo learning to attack with his backpack, for example. These moves should have just been available off the bat. I mean, you're supposed to go through levels separated without a basic attack for a while? That's a little silly. And don't get me wrong, there are some really cool additions like the glide mechanic for Kazooie or Banjo hopping into his backpack to enter hot or cold water without being hurt. 
It's just the quality varies between your moves and when it's more of a gimmick such as ice or fire eggs, when you have grenade eggs, it's like, what's the point? This leads into the big thing I see people saying about Kazooie over Tui. It's much more balanced with its moveset and level design around it. And to that I say, yes, I agree, I see your point. Everything is a function and all of these functions are used equally. Kazooie may have just had the basics, but it used all of the basics in just about every level. Whereas in Tui, they kind of threw things in to throw things in. One example, even though I like the move, is in Glitter Gulch Mine in Tui, how you use the build drill to break open these rocks. But honestly, once you learn the build drill, you never really use the beak buster move ever again, which is your basic ground pound. Even the task of hitting switches in Tui has changed from smashing it with the beak buster to just stepping on it. There was something so satisfying about hitting switches in Kazooie like that. I question why they changed it, but even despite that, none of the moves you learn are inherently bad by any means, but it does make you feel excited about learning something new too as you continue learning throughout basically the entire game. Level design and backtracking. This is something that can plague 3D platformers, the most notorious I think being Donkey Kong 64 due to the sheer number of Kongs and collectibles. However, Tui is no slouch. If you haven't seen my analysis of DK64, go check it out and you'll see what I mean. On one hand, I can count how many times you have to backtrack in Kazooie using a new move in an old place, like the Turbo Trainers in Freeze Easy Peak to raise Boggy, while Tui is riddled with tons of backtracking. Like using a move you learned in Pterodactyl Land and having to go back to Witchy World to complete something you started two worlds ago. Granted, that's for collecting 100% of stuff, which you don't have to do. I'm just gonna say this, I think that people that really have the biggest issue with backtracking are people that like to complete things 100%. I've done it. I've completed things 100%, and honestly, it's satisfying to do, but you don't have to. I personally like collectibles, but going through my playthroughs, I haven't been doing 100%. <laughs> Kazooie's levels are designed more as one-offs. You explore the hub, unlock a level, and enter, whereas in Tui it was intended to be this giant interconnected world with lots to explore. The sheer size of levels between Tui and Kazooie is crazy. I think they're both packed with content, but the main thing being Kazooie's content is condensed to a smaller area while Tui's is spread out over a larger one. Also often Tui makes you repeat tasks to complete an objective like the kickball tournaments in My Hem Temple. You have to beat three versions getting progressively harder of the same thing, which is more tedious than it is difficult. It's that kind of nitpicky stuff that irritates people. One thing I often hear too is Tui's levels often feel empty. I don't know who says that, but I've read it in places online. That was one of the things I kept in mind when replaying Tui, specifically in Pterodactyl Land, but it never felt empty to me. I think this is a case of someone said it once and someone believed it, and it perpetuated, so lots of people believe it. There isn't a single world in Tui that feels empty to me, honestly. Maybe after you've collected and beaten everything, but what wouldn't? Agree to disagree if you feel that way, but you're wrong. Collecting Notes and Jiggies in Kazooie, collecting notes functions as collecting 100 in a level and then using those to progress to the next area of the hub. You also collect jiggies which come into play by unlocking levels. Also worth noting that when you leave a level, it retains a note score, but if you come back, you'll have to recollect every note you collected before. So let's say you collect 95 notes and leave the level. You only need 5 more notes till you get them all. But to get those 5, you have to go back in and recollect all 95 plus the new 5 to get to 100. In Tui, you collect notes to learn new moves rather than unlocking sections of the hub world. They're much more manageable and come in bundles. You can then use those new moves to progress in the hub world, which feels more fulfilling and less tedious. It's also cool if you can progress to new areas in, in the hub before you even unlock the level. Plus, if you collect a lot of notes in one level, you can always get more moves if you have enough so you can progress rather than having to go back and get everything, which Kazooie basically makes you do by the end of the game. This makes it much more tedious in Kazooie, even if the levels are smaller as a whole. Jiggy's function relatively the same and still unlock levels as collected, although it feels much more rewarding to get Jiggies in Tui. Kazooie puts more emphasis on exploring, while Tui not only is about exploring, but it's a about accomplishing tasks and quests. Now, not all of these are created equal, and some are tedious and annoying, but generally a lot of them are unique and well thought out and much more rewarding once you figure them out. Performance This is where I will not sugarcoat it. Kazooie's performance way outpaces Tui. Tui was very ambitious with its graphics, lighting, and scope of its world. So ambitious, it outpaced the hardware it was designed for. Oftentimes you'll encounter frame dips that break up the action. It's not game breaking, but it's definitely noticeable. Kazooie just really didn't have that. And if it did have a frame dip, which it sometimes did, it was much less noticeable and only happened on rare occasions. Tui's happens all the time. I will say though that frame dips in this game seem much more manageable than today's AAA titles. Like today if games have frame dips, it's almost as if they're unplayable. But this slows for a second and you're back in. I think that's the key. It doesn't stop and stutter, it slows down so even though it frame dips, it's smooth. Is this a different technique? I don't know. 
but just something I wanted to try to explain as someone who doesn't fully understand what's happening. It just goes with the territory pushing the edge of that old hardware. Tui does offer improvements to a lot of graphical features, most notably lighting. I said this in my analysis, but look at Banjo's shadow. It's an actual shadow of him. If you compare this with Kazooie, it's just a dark circle. That was huge to me, even as a kid. Not to mention, look at collecting a jiggy and how it lights up around you as it circles you. They were definitely pushing what this hardware could do. For some people, the trade-off isn't worth it, and although I think it's cool looking, I personally would have preferred it to run better myself as well. Never exchange performance for graphics. If you're not locked in at a consistent frame rate, then what the heck are you doing? You have no business adding in all the graphical effects you are. Just take a seat back and polish it till it runs great, remove what you have to. Transformations and playable characters. In Kazooie, you get to play as Banjo and Kazooie. That's it. In Tui, you can play as Banjo and Kazooie, Banjo, or Kazooie, or Mumbo. In the first game, Mumbo gave you transformations, while in Tui, that role has been given to Humbo Wumbo, while giving players control as Mumbo to use his magic to alter the world in some way. Clearly, just having another playable character that's different than Banjo and Kazooie is a win. But also giving us the ability to ditch the other and play separated gave us further distinct movesets and creative objectives for specific characters. The transformations in 2A are also generally better, and that can be summarized with one important distinction. In 2E, the transformations can do more than just get small. In Kazooie, 90% of the transformations just made you smaller, and that would allow you to enter some area you couldn't before. In 2E, the transformations allow you to attack, traverse different areas, take out enemies in different ways, and accomplish different tasks. In general, they just felt way more fleshed out and important. I'd argue just adding the ability to attack as each transformation puts it way ahead of Kazooie's, with the exception of the alligator. Look at these transformations and tell me which ones you think would be cooler. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about some things NOT offered in Kazooie that Tui has. On this I will not include visual and sound options, only because I don't think anyone really cared about widescreen in 1998 when Kazooie launched. Multiplayer! Having a form of multiplayer in 2E is a welcome addition. It isn't Bottle's Revenge level of multiplayer I wish we got, but having the option to compete with your friends in minigames from 2E is awesome. And the ability to select your character is also cool. And on top of multiplayer, they also added a replay mode so you can refight your favorite bosses from the adventure. Oh yeah, that's right! Kazooie only had a few enemies you could really consider bosses, like the TNT crate or this hermit crab on Treasure Trove Cove. Tui has a boss in every level, and while not all of them are equally as good, they are all in fact good and offer a unique way to fight them. It really overall adds to the scope of the game and makes each world feel even more special. Look at Mr. Patch, Old King Cole, and even Minji Jongo. All dramatically different fights and all super fun and interesting characters, you just didn't have that in Kazooie. I will say though, fighting Grunty at the end of Kazooie is more rewarding than fighting Grunty in the end of Tui. The boss fight's just better and more fulfilling in Kazooie. Same with Furnace Fun vs the Tower of Tragedy. Same idea, it's just implemented better in Kazooie, I think. Now factoring all I've said about the game so far, we can say, Tui has more fleshed out gameplay fluidity, emphasizing more options for gameplay and with better graphics while Kazooie has a more balanced approach to visual fidelity and performance with better and more use of the moveset you have without giving you as many options. The perfect example of keep it simple and succeeding. Kazooie's levels emphasize exploration while Tui's emphasize a more task-based structure with interconnectivity and intentional backtracking. Collecting things feels more like a requirement in Kazooie, while in Tui there's more of an option for the amount of collecting you do, offering players more of a choice with how they prefer to play. Some of the things I think we can appreciate on both, but one doesn't necessarily outshine the other, are music and sound design. Both are masterpieces. I'm sure those that played both can remember tracks from both. Treasure Trove Cove is a gem, and so is Hillfire Peaks. I'm not going to argue, they both slap pretty hard. The world building and character design both offer bizarre colorful characters and some reoccur in Tui from Kazooie in different ways. But being a sequel is expected to add more characters. It did a great job of expanding upon what we had. Kazooie introduced the characters we fell in love with in the first place, so it's not really fair to say the original didn't do as much. So if you look at these games objectively, I can see why people prefer one over the other. If you look at them together as they should be, you'll see the progression and smart additions made to a sequel that maybe was just a tad too ambitious for the hardware it was built on, but still great at its core. My final thoughts on the matter are whether you're on the Kazooie's Better Camp or the Tui is Better Camp, you should be respected for acknowledging that both games have merit, and at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. Both of these games are absolute masterpieces and we're clamoring and eagerly needing a Banjo 3E. Oh, rare, you darn tease. And also, if you think Kazooie's better, you're wrong.
Well, that's all I have for you. I hope you'll punch the heck out of that subscribe button, like my video so it gets shown to more people, and ding that little noti bell so you catch my future uploads. Until next time, have a good one!